Hi, I'm Dr. Phil Schauer, Director of the Minimally Invasive Surgery Symposium. I'm here today with uh, my colleague, Dr. John Marks. Well, Phil, thanks for having me, and it's a pleasure to be here with you. It's always a highlight of the year uh, to come to the MISS meeting. Yeah. Well, you know, it's neat. We've been able to um, uh, and bring a lot of surgeons throughout the country to come here. And in your mind, what do you think um, uh, is the, the value of this, of this program? It serves, I think, a real specialty niche in the surgical world, which is based on bringing together the faculty is present company excluded, world class. Not you, but me. Yes, and, uh, of course. <laughs> and, and has been over the years. And uh, not only that, and so what that has done is attract an audience that is really engaged and experienced in minimally invasive surgery. So it creates a dynamic in the auditorium that's very different than most meetings because there's a back and forth and a real question and answering and how do you do things. It's very, it's very scientifically rigorous because the faculty, as I said, is excellent, but it's very focused on procedure. I and mean, when you have the best and most experienced surgeons in the world talking about what they're expert about, it goes a long way and the audience feels that. Gathered together are some outstanding speakers. It seemed to me these are not only guys and gals that um, are very skilled, but they're also very good teachers. So how do you go about um, identifying these types of people? Well, first of all, I mean, you know, I came into this with you and Morris Franklin doing this and Morris always set the bar so high in colorectal that uh, it's kind of embarrassing to follow after him. but. You know, uh, really it's, first of all, they have to be nice nice people and people you like because otherwise you don't want to invite them and spend the week with them. So, uh, but from the, from the group of uh, excellent surgeons, I, I think that almost uniformly the faculty really is very engaging. They're very personable people. I mean, these are not the stiff, uh, they might be university surgeons, but they're not the stiff university types that can't relate to what people are doing. Um, and so I think that just from knowing people and knowing who would fit well in the culture of this meeting, and I, and I think what you've done, what your whole team has done that's been so fantastic, is to create a culture that makes it special. It's a fun culture, mm -hmm. it's casual, and yet rigorous at the same time, mm -hmm. and I think that creates there's enough social as well as scientific aspect to it that it creates a rapport between the audience and the speakers that's invaluable and I mm -hmm. think, again, what makes things special. So do you think, um, uh, do you think that's helpful uh, for, the, speaking for the faculty or for the audience and sort of maybe breaking down barriers? Well, I have to be honest, as you made fun of me all day yesterday because I had a coat and tie. <laughs> you did have a coat and tie, that's right, but now you're casual. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, uh, I, think, I think it's great to be uh, casual and yet informative. I think uh, there's a whole mix of things. That I, the most important thing is that probably does contribute to the culture that's open. It's probably the best mm -hmm. way. It's an open exchange of ideas and opinions. and. Mm -hmm. When you have, you also have a lot of people, I mean, I learned things from, about anesthetics that are used from the guy in the audience who came up and we were talking afterwards. I mean, I'm learning as much as I'm sharing. So for me, that's why I like to come every year. Yeah, so just uh, the, the response from the audience, the um, interactivity, the questions from the audience, uh, what have you learned about the people that come to this? These are people who are very active and engaged in minimum invasive surgery. I mean, these are the people who are doing it themselves, and as a result, their questions are different than you get at the big national meetings. They're, they understand the nuances in a different mm -hmm. way than you. You're not getting the basic questions. You're getting the, well, how do you, you know, I did this. 50 times and I'm doing it this way, why do you like it your way? And so I think that it leads the conversation down a path that's, uh, that's really high level and engaging. And I think the, for the most part, the, there are a lot, what's also noticeable about this meeting is there are a lot of attendees who are return attendees. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be a kind of a word of mouth thing, like 
-hmm. amongst people who are very active in mm -hmm. invasive surgery. They're bringing other people and you can't have any higher endorsement of a meeting than people who say, hey, this was so good, mm -hmm. I'm going to come back again. Mm -hmm. How did you go about picking topics? Maybe you can throw out some examples of some of the topics that, that seem to resonate this year with the audience. Well, I think that uh, when you're putting together an agenda, it's always a little bit of a challenge to take the temperature of the country and what's going on in your field. And I'm always, maybe it's because I'm interested in this, but I'm always very focused on bringing kind of how-to, you know. So we, in the colorectal program this year, we had kind of a come to my OR type. There's a mm -hmm. lot of video intensive things, <clears throat> which I think the audience likes very much, as well as uh, there are a lot of topics that are things you think about and talk about, but no one really gives a good for, you know. So we talked about not only how do you do an intracorporeal right colonic anastomosis, laparoscopic TME surgery, you know, what's the role of the robot, mm -hmm. all the things that are being spoken about a lot in, uh, in the colorectal field, but also how do you manage things outside of the operating room in terms of, you know, there's a great, I thought there's a great talk on DVT prophylaxis mm -hmm. and how to do that and what the science is behind it, mm -hmm. what the state of the art, quality of life around diverticulitis and mm -hmm. indications to operate. I mean, these are all things that you kind of, uh, you know, what's the role of washing out the abdomen mm -hmm. as opposed to doing a Hartman's procedure. These are things that I think the audience, the general surgeons hear about, but not in depth. And mm -hmm. so if you can bring that to them while also keeping them engaged, uh, in terms of how to, they really like it right. a lot. And then lastly, you want to feed a little bit of kind of what might be coming. And mm -hmm. so some of the endoluminal surgery and the bottoms up ta, -ta mm -hmm. stuff, they get a kick out of too. So I don't know, I think it went very well. All the feedback I've gotten from the people in the audience was very strong, right. so I liked it. Well, it seemed like there was a nice mixture um, with respect to you know some good science. Um, but a lot of emphasis on you know, practical issues that the audience can, can, um, you know, can actually address and take back to them, so that apply they can apply these within a few days of leaving this this, this conference. Lars Paulman, who ran the Swedish rectal cancer trial and is kind of one of the major people, he said to me once right at a meeting. He said his professor said to him, "If you come home from a meeting and you've learned one thing." that you can use, then it's a worthwhile meeting. And I think the beauty of this meeting is in each of the fields for general surgeon to have, I mean, there's a whole pocket full of pearls that they can take home and colorectal and hernia and foregut and bariatric. I mean, when I look at the other people speaking, it's just, mm -hmm. it's kind of a who's who in their different fields. So I think that's what draws people here. Correct. Well, John, um, I think it's been a successful year. Um, and I look forward to seeing what you have up your sleeve for next year, 2016. So All right. start thinking about it, get your list together of speakers and ideas, and we'll be letting our audience know fairly soon what will be in store for 2016. Well, I'm looking forward to it, Phil, and uh, congratulations to you and your team, as I said, for continuing to put on a meeting that, while familiar, continues to be fresh and pushing the boundaries, and you're to be congratulated. Well, it's only because I find people like you, my friend. <laughs> All right, great okay. to see you. Very good. Okay.